Welcome to a tutorial showing three ways how ground control points can be utilized in TerraSolid software. This video will show how to import ground control points, how to georeference a point cloud with fit using targets, how to check the position accuracy and create a report with output control report, and lastly using TerraMatch to demonstrate how ground control points can be used as tie lines as a more advanced approach. Starting off with importing the ground control points with TerraScan, which are in a text file where each row consists of one control point with easting, norting and elevation data in separate columns. When the data is imported, change the layer symbology. The known points needs to be written into the CAD design file, which is done in TerraScan under the output tab and write to design file. Use color by active symbology and the points will be saved to the active layer. Now the points are drawn permanently into the platform and you can close the points, import the point cloud and the ground control points will still be visible in the software. The first method where ground control points can be utilized is to georeference a point cloud. There are a few different alternatives how to do it, fit using targets being one of them. This tool is used for aligning the point cloud's local coordinates to real coordinates based on the ground control points by applying a translation and rotation to the point cloud. Here a point cloud from a handheld Faro Orbis system has been imported. If the point cloud is very far from the ground control points, it's good to move the point cloud closer before beginning the georeferencing process. Change the visualization of the point cloud under view and display mode. Change color by to intensity auto to easier see the signal markers placed in the scene and zoom in on a signal marker. Under the tools tab in TerraScan, there are the alternatives fit to reference using surface or trees, which can georeference without signal markers. For example, by identifying individual trees from two different datasets and finding an appropriate adjustment. However, this demo shows how to georeference with fit using targets found under the line tab. Choose a method between manual entry or automatic. The point cloud needs to be classified to be able to select the classes where the signal markers can be found. In this case, hold shift to select both ground and low vegetation. Set the maximum offset from the trajectory that is considered when searching the targets. One square is the length of one square in the chessboard signal marker. Bright and dark is the expected intensities of the bright and dark part of the signal marker. This can be checked in the view tab field and turning on intensity so the intensity column is visible. And select identify and click on the signal markers dark and bright parts to see the values in the intensity column. The dark stayed mostly at zero and the bright was around 10,000. Except is the number of targets to search and then press OK. This process takes a while. As a result, the application lists individual points of potential targets in a fit target dialog. Individual points can be visualized in the point cloud by selecting one point in the list and press show location. Click on the view window to see the location of that point. The best findings are the highest in the list. By pressing remove, the selected unwanted point is deleted. Enter target manually defines a target's coordinates. If you know where a signal marker or a known point is placed, use add source to add new targets manually by clicking where you want it on the point cloud in the view window. Two findings are the minimum needed to solve the translation and rotation correction. To continue fitting the point cloud to the known points, go to the file tab, read targets XYZ and select the text file which contains the ground control points. This opens the known points and links them to the findings. Now the window shows the details of the found target's location along with the known points and their residuals on the right. Show location now shows the found signal markers in red and the ground control points in yellow. Low residuals are wanted, otherwise the data cannot be adjusted well. 
If the residuals are low, press Apply in the right bottom corner of the Fit Target dialog to run the adjustment. Choose which corrections to run and run on loaded points. Press OK and the point cloud shifts to fit the ground control points. Zoom in and check the results. In this case, the rubber sheet correction would not work good due to there only being two ground control points. To run the rubber sheet adjustment, we want good geometry of the signal markers across the whole point cloud. Take a cross section to see how the elevation fits. Save the georeference point cloud for further processing. Next method is output control report in Terrascan. This tool creates a report of elevation differences and horizontal shifts between a point cloud and ground control points or a surface model. Additionally, from there corrections can be applied to improve the positioning accuracy. An already georeference UVA dataset is imported, which covers a larger area than the handheld data in the previous step. Zoom in on a signal marker. In this dataset, the signal markers don't have as good intensity values, so they are difficult to visualize, but by drawing a cross section, we can see how the elevation fits. First thing to do before validating the data is to define a signal marker. In Terrascan settings, scroll down to signal marker and press add. The chessboard signal marker pattern is predefined in Terrascan. Therefore, we can just enter the name, choose the right pattern, and address the total width of the signal marker. In this case, our signal markers are 50 by 50 centimeters. The red dot in the center indicates where the known point measurement is taken from. Then under the Tools tab, select Output Control Report, which opens a dialog. In class, select the classes where the signal markers are searched from. Check defines which dimensions to include, only elevation or full XYZ. In signal, select the created signal marker that the software then will search for. Max mismatch defines the radius around a known point to search for a signal marker. Known points is the path for the text file which includes the ground control points. And last, define how the software reads the order of the columns in the text file. The result is a control report which lists the ground control points in the text file with additional information. Select a point and press show location to visualize how well the point cloud aligns with the ground control points. The dialog shows the points easting, norting and elevation data and the dimensions different residuals between the point cloud and ground control points along with mismatch information computed for different values which can be selected in the value list. If the positioning of a signal marker is off, you can manually enter the position with Enter Position. Choose the signal marker and an angle and click where you want it to be on the point cloud. If then you prefer where the software placed it, press Detect, Set Search Radius and click in the view on the signal marker and the software will locate the signal marker automatically. In view and display mode, you can change the representation of the signal marker. Choose the symbol to represent the point. Size determines the size of the symbol. And change the color to scheme, so the color changes based on the mismatch values. And lastly, select which labels to visualize. Now the chosen symbology is shown around all the signals in the view window, in a color scheme defined by the XYZ mismatch values. To align the point cloud to fit the ground control points, you can apply a systematic shift. In Apply and Shift, apply the correction on loaded points and select the dimension of the shift to a full 3D or only an elevation or horizontal shift. This then moves the point cloud slightly with a constant value so it matches more accurately with the ground control points. When applied, the shift values are copied to the clipboard, meaning it can be directly pasted into the transformations in Terrascan settings, for example if the same values need to be applied on the trajectory. Also in the Apply tab, a rubber sheet correction can be applied to the loaded points on the full XYZ dimensions. In this UVA dataset, there is a good geometry of the ground control points, therefore the rubber sheet correction will work better. This stretches the point cloud to perfectly align with the ground control points, making all the residuals and mismatch values to zero. The output control report can be saved as a text file under the Files tab and save as text.
The last method in this tutorial is how ground control points can be used as tie lines with TerraMatch. Tie lines match points that show the same location on different lines or moments in time and are useful for solving corrections, visualizing and reporting mismatches. It's similar to output control report, but it's a more advanced method that requires the trajectory of the dataset, allowing more control and options of different types of reports and works in larger scale. Now working with TerraMatch. TerraScan and TerraMatch use different definitions for signal markers. So first you need to define the signal marker in TerraMatch. Go to TerraMatch settings and signal marker this time showing how to manually draw the signal marker into the CAD file. In SPATIX, one of the easiest ways to draw in the correct dimension is by inserting a grid, done by pressing the sun symbol at the bottom left corner in the view window. Under rendering, check the box show grid, and under grid, set the dimensions to correspond to the width of one square of the signal marker. So here the signal marker is 50 by 50 centimeters, making one square 250 millimeters. When the grid is placed, use the place block tool and activate lock to grid, so the cursor snaps to the grid, and draw the outlines of the signal marker. Select the signal marker with the choose element tool, press add and then the software wants you to enter the origin point, from where the ground control point was measured on the signal marker. Name the marker and select if it's placed on the ground or on a vertical surface. The red dot indicates the origin point and click OK. The drawing can now be deleted from the CAD file. In TerraMatch, there is the Find Tie Line tool that lists the observations. It first opens the settings dialog where you can change how the view windows automatically will be adjusted. But the key thing is to define the ground classes and set the path to the trajectory. The software adjusts the view windows and opens the tie line dialog. In the dialog and file, you can import the ground control points from a text file or from selected vectors. The ground control points are already imported to the software, so all the points in the CAD file can be highlighted with choose element tool and then use the import points from selected vectors command. This opens a new dialog where you choose a point type the signal marker, which was defined before, free rotation, and minimum contrast, which is the intensity contrast between bright and dark parts of the signal markers. TerraMatch notifies how many known points it has found, in this case 5 points, and creates a list of the points and their data. By selecting one tie line, a more detailed zoomed-in visualization of the point is presented. If you want to change the information shown in the tie line list, go to View, Fields and select which details you want to be represented. Again, in View and Display mode, the visualization of the tie line points can be adjusted. If Color By is set to Set Mismatch, press Define and change to appropriate values corresponding with the elevation mismatch values. The points are color coded in the View window depending on how large or small the elevation mismatch is. The color scheme can be saved if needed and then press OK and apply. Now zooming in and going through the list to better visualize how the tie lines are displayed. The points are in different color depending on how accurately they correspond to the known points elevation. In file, an output report gives a report containing information about the number of observations, the XYZ correction values to apply to the data, along with mismatch values. The output report can be saved as a text file. Another tool to use for solving corrections and for reporting is Find Tie Line Match. This tool analyzes the mismatch values in the tie lines and searches for correction values with feature to feature matching. Choose between airborne or generic scanner system, choose the source and if it will search the whole dataset, line groups or individual lines. Select between combined scanner solution or if you have data from different scanners. And lastly, check the boxes of which shift values the report will include. The result is a fine tie line match report of correction and average mismatch values. These values can be saved as a correction file 
or a text file and then utilized in apply correction tool. Fine tie line fluctuation is a tool comparing short intervals of each flight strip against other overlapping strips and computes corrections for the data as a correction curve which changes over time. Choose the appropriate settings for your dataset as trajectory and check which corrections to solve. The result is a report of average mismatches which can be saved as a text file along with a fluctuation dialog showing the list of flight strips on the left and a graph of corrections for the selected strip on the right. The fluctuation graph does not give us much information, but you can check whether the mismatches stayed consistent or varied over time during the point cloud collection. And when selecting an observation in the graph, you can see its correction values at the top. Under File and Display Settings, you can define which correction is shown in the graph and the range of the graph. You can also save a correction file to apply the correction later. Find Rubber Sheet Fit tool can be used to match data to control points based on a triangulated correction model. This tool is usually used as a last adjustment step for UVA laser data. Set appropriate settings. This opens the Find Rubber Sheet correction report showing the mismatch values, indicating the level of improvement that can be achieved by applying the correction model. Save as a correction file or as a text file from the file tab. You can also draw the correction vectors into the CAD file by using the command from the draw tab. To apply any of the correction values to the point cloud, use the correction tool in TerraMatch. The correction can be applied to loaded points. Set the path to the trajectory and choose how to enter the corrections. Enter manually, press OK and check the boxes for what dimensions to correct and write in the correction values from a report. Or select load from file and upload a correction file from one of the reports and the correction values are inserted to the application and press OK. Now the point cloud is adjusted according to the inserted values. You need to update the tie lines with the corrections to see the improvements from the correction values. Define new tie lines and import the ground control points as before. Now the mismatch values are updated, in this case based on the fine tie line match correction file, and we see an improvement of the mismatch values. By doing a new report, you get new corrections that can be applied, and the mismatch values becomes even smaller. And lastly, save the point cloud with the corrections. To wrap up, ground control points are useful for improving point cloud accuracy and for georeferencing. TerraScan has easier tools as fit using targets and output control report. TerraMatch is good for larger scale data and enables a more custom workflow using the ground control points as tie lines. This was everything for this tutorial. Thank you for watching.